In this introduction to JavaScript, let us learn about these three important questions. What is JavaScript? Where is JavaScript used? And where does JavaScript run? So let us start with what is JavaScript? JavaScript is the most popular and widely used programming language. Its popularity and usage is growing widely and it is used by most large companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, etc. to build applications. A lot of libraries and frameworks have also been developed on JavaScript which are widely used. JavaScript has great career prospects. If you know JavaScript well, you can become a front-end developer, developing the front-end of mobile and web applications. You can become a back-end developer. And you can also become a full-stack developer, that is, developing both the front-end and the back-end. Let's move to the next question. Where is JavaScript used? JavaScript was initially created to build interactive web pages for browsers. From that humble start, JavaScript has evolved very fast and developed a lot of features and use cases. Companies like Google and Facebook have been instrumental in making JavaScript and their libraries and frameworks very popular. Today, JavaScript is widely used for a variety of purposes. And the most important of them are mobile and web apps. So starting from its journey as making interactive web pages, it is now used to develop complete mobile and web apps. It's also used to develop games. A lot of real-time networking and chat apps, which are also widely used in today's times. And on the server side as a backend tool. Where does JavaScript run? As we discussed earlier, JavaScript was originally designed to create interactive web pages in browsers. So initially, JavaScript ran within web browsers. In fact, every web browser has a JavaScript engine. The JavaScript engine in Chrome is V8 and the JavaScript engine in Firefox is SpiderMonkey and in Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge is Chakra. This is widely used to develop the rich frontend in mobile and web apps. Now in 2009 something interesting happened and engineer took the V8 JavaScript engine of Chrome and embedded it in a C++ program. This program was called Node. And what did Node allow? Node allowed JavaScript code to be run outside the browser. And this led to more use cases for JavaScript. Today, Node is widely used to develop backend for web and mobile apps. So to answer the question, JavaScript is largely run in browsers, in the JavaScript engine in browsers and in Node. Let us now see JavaScript in action. So as we discussed, the browsers have a JavaScript engine embedded in it and Chrome has the V8 engine. So let me pull up a Chrome. So this is a Chrome tab and if I right click on it I get this inspect so let me click on inspect and now if I click on console here I can run JavaScript code so let me just type something so let me say console.log hello world now console.log is a JavaScript command and we have run that command here and it has printed hello world. So later in the next lessons, we will learn how to write JavaScript code 
and how to run it. But this is a demonstration to see that JavaScript code is running within a web browser. You can also do the same in a Firefox or in an Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. Let us now look at the JavaScript development environment. So the most commonly used environments for development in JavaScript are the first one is Sublime Text. Sublime Text is an editor and it's a widely used editor. So with the Sublime Text and the browser, we can do JavaScript development. But once we get into more in-depth development, we would typically use VS Code. Also, if we want to do node or backend development, typically VS Code is preferred. So to start off and get the initial hang of JavaScript, we will use Sublime Text. So you can go to this URL www.sublimetext.com and download and install Sublime Text. So let us start by writing a basic JavaScript program. So here I have created an HTML file and named it hello.html which has very basic simple HTML code. So you can just copy it in an HTML file and then in the Chrome browser I have run this file. So now what do we want to do? We want to add some JavaScript code to it. So JavaScript code is typically added at the end of the body tag and we will write script and then put end script and between this we put in the JavaScript code. So let me write a simple code which is say console.log hello world and save it and now let me refresh this html file let me go to inspect and here i will go to console so now you can see i get the output hello world in the console i could have added another line here say console.log welcome to javascript if i save and refresh it i get this output also so hello world and welcome to javascript so here this is the way we can do it and in the future lessons also this is the framework we would use so here we are using sublime text 3 so which we have downloaded from sublime text and we are using the chrome browser to run this code now an issue with this code is that the HTML and the JavaScript are getting integrated in a single file. Now that is okay when the code is small, but typically as the code starts becoming more complex and long, that's not a easy and a neat thing to maintain. So we have a concept in programming known as separation of concerns. And what we will do is we will separate the HTML code and the JavaScript code. So let us see how do we do it. So here is our hello.html which has the HTML and the JavaScript in it. And as we discussed, we don't want the JavaScript code here. So in the same directory, I have created a file and just named it say file1.js. So .js is for JavaScript. So you could name it anything. And let me just cut this code and put it in file1.js so now my javascript code is in file1.js which i have saved in my hello html what i can say is that script src is equal to file1.js so i can say that for my script the source will be this file and that is all i need to do let me save this and run it and when I run it, I get the output. And also notice the line numbers. So the line number here is file1.js colon 1. So in this file, line number 1 is giving this output and line number 2 is giving this output. So line numbers are also important because they help us debug our code or make sense of errors, compile errors or any other error. 
So this concept is referred to as separation of concerns where we are separating the HTML code and the JavaScript code. Let me just to check it add another line say and say call it say the concept that we are learning separation of concerns. Now if I just refresh this file and you can see we have gotten this output. A couple of other related concepts that we need to know. So this is a comment. So a comment is something that is not executed by the machine, but it is for humans. So it is for comments that I would put in or you would put in so that you remember what you're doing. You are explaining it and other developers can also make sense of it. So now when I run this code, let me just save it. You can see that the line numbers have changed, but there is no output from here. So this is a comment and we will be heavily using them also. And this is the setup. So just familiarize yourself with it and we would be using it in our next lessons.